afternoon. As I look out across this audience today, I see student-facing leaders, staff members, advisors. But no matter what your role is, the very most important job you have is to help students succeed. We owe it to our students to offer them advice that will help them grow during the time at our institutions while also allowing them to forge their own path. I truly believe this. It was even a bumper sticker on my car. If you're a Nakata person, you'll know this one. I advise, you decide. But it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking when students don't succeed. But because we owe it to them, there are plans in place to help get them back on track. At most institutions, unfortunately, these plans consist of punitive probation and exclusion programs that are meant for our students with those low GPAs. I wanna focus on that term for just a minute. Punitive probation and exclusion. That doesn't sound helpful, does it? No, because it's not. That type of approach is absolutely ineffective from the very start. At Columbus State University, where I serve as the Associate Director of Advising, we used to do the same thing. We just sent our students an email that was blunt, full of jargon, instead of using supportive, personalized language that we should have. We simply said, your GPA is under a 2.0, you're now on academic probation. In dealing with something like this, it's really easy to forget just how powerful our words can be for our students. Language and how we use it is important. Not only does it shape our identity, but it also shapes the identity of those students who we are speaking to. When spoken to with overly punitive language, students are left to feel like a toddler who's been sent to the corner for time out. I found that oftentimes that very language will create a self-fulfilling prophecy. When a student's told they failed, they begin to believe they will always fail. And in turn, they create an identity that is rooted in failure and shame. When we use that type of language, the opposite of what we want to happen happens. Our students become irreparably discouraged. At Columbus State, our data has shown that less than one in five students, less than one in five that were put on probation or exclusion return to the university. Now personally, I know how difficult it can be to work up the courage to return. It took me a total of 10 years to get my undergraduate degree. This photo is me graduating with my sister who is five years younger than me. Now, I saw a lot over that decade. And I learned how important it is to let students know that we've faced roadblocks as well, that we failed to be transparent with them, and that we're not judging them. I wish I had somebody tell me that after I returned to finish my degree, but I didn't. And there are two moments that will stay with me forever. The first, is when I briefly changed my major as an undergraduate. I went to see my advisor. She was the chair of the department. To discuss my class schedule. Normal, right? She took a look at my credits that I needed and she decided on my class schedule without asking me a single thing about myself. She didn't ask about my goals. She didn't even ask what I needed to succeed. In the end, I had no say about my schedule. She simply printed it out and handed it to me. It was an awkward interaction. It was less than 10 minutes and I just sat there while she just worked on her computer. There was no relationship building, no conversation at all. Instead, it was a transaction. And I was reduced to feeling like a number on a spreadsheet, which I was by the way. She put me in those classes to bolster her department's numbers. Why was it so important that she asked me what I needed in the class schedule? Because I had a four-year-old daughter, Sydney, at home. And I'm very happy and thrilled that Sydney is here today to join us. <laughs> 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 
Sydney was in daycare from 9 to 3. And outside those hours, I didn't want anybody else taking care of her. I wanted to be with her. So I built a class schedule that worked around her, which is why one of the reasons it took me 10 years. <laughs> so I took it upon myself and I just changed that schedule. And after about a week, I got that email saying, you can't do that, change it back. Again, she didn't ask why I did it. But as a higher educational professional, she should have understood that there were things outside of the classroom that impacted my life. I was always a mother first and a student second. I felt especially discouraged because this was my first semester back after dropping out. It was a huge knockdown and it almost drove me, almost, to giving up altogether instead of just doing something like changing my major. Even years later, as an advisor myself, I think about this interaction often. This process often makes sense to department chairs or leadership, but for students, it's red tape. It's a barrier meant to hold them back. Now, I know just how easy it is to give up if you don't feel supported. Some of our students don't have the grit or the determination to stand up for themselves. Not yet. Our job is to teach them that. As an advisor, it breaks my heart to see students fall into these situations. But it is important for me that my students never feel this way. I ended up changing my major professional writing English track after taking an advertising class from a professor as an elective. It just clicked. I clicked with the professor, I clicked with the content, and I found my place on campus. I remember sitting in that class. When it happened, I felt like a light bulb went off and I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm good at. That class and that professor drove me to commit to that English degree with a professional writing track and I took every single class of his from then on out. It all came together in another moment that sticks out to me in my educational journey. My senior year, I won the Professional Writing English Major of the Year Award. I was even nominated by the same professor. At this point, I was a completely different person than I was when I first came back. I was validated. I knew I belonged at the university. I was doing a good job. My life was going where I wanted to go, and I knew that I was building a life that not only I could be proud of, but my daughter could be proud of. The ceremony was March 31st, 2006 at 2 p.m., a date I will always remember. Unfortunately, that was also the day of my daughter's field day event, and I had already signed up to be a room parent. I had made a promise to my daughter, even before I knew I won the award. So I had to make a choice between keeping the promise that I made my daughter and accepting my own award. Every single time, the promise to my daughter will win. You can't say no to that smile. So I had to tell the faculty member that, hey, I appreciate the nod, but I wasn't going to be able to attend. Oh, I remember that conversation. <laughs> I was nervous. I didn't want to go in there and talk to him. <laughs> it was a short conversation. It was awkward. It didn't go well. After that, there was no communication between us, no interactions, and what there was was very formal. And I felt like I was just kind of being written off, disappointed. I didn't even get to pick up the award from him. He handed it off to my department chair to give it to me. Now I know it's just about having different perspectives and my priority is not his priority. But I still felt about two inches tall for making that decision. As an advisor, I know how wrong it is to make our students feel that way. Our students shouldn't be shamed for making a choice or decision we don't agree with. Our job is to advise, they decide. These are the moments who have turned me into the advisor I am today. And at the end of the day, my job, not to make the decision, but to provide them all the information they need, let them make the best decision for themselves, 
regardless of whether or not I agree with it. Kind of like being a parent. In recent years, my department has seen a change in students. Today, as many in three and four students are experiencing anxiety or depression. The last thing we need to do is add to that. Now, this isn't new. This has been going on forever. What's new, though, is the number of students who are okay talking about this. They're ready to be open about their issues. This has changed since COVID. <laughs> They're comfortable about talking about it. This has prompted us to take another look at how we speak to our students and adding in that element of being human. In 2019, Columbus State University leadership had an epiphany that the only way we could truly support our students is to treat the whole student, especially when it comes to failure. So we changed three things. One, language. We changed how we talk to our students, especially in the light of failure. We had to find a way to talk to them about it without shaming them. So we softened that email language. It's no longer, you did this, you fix it. Today we say, we care about you and your success and getting you to that end goal. Unfortunately, you're now on university support, but we are here for you. Here is what we're going to do for you. Faculty and staff went through mindset training, which enabled them to speak to students in a more productive way. Next, we reframed our approach as we advise, not decide, and we do not make assumptions. We instead have that open conversation with a student, asking them, hey, what do you need? We put the student in the driver's seat of their own journey. And we don't forget, there are things outside that classroom that has an impact. Maybe it's a child, maybe it's a job, maybe it's taking care of elderly parent, mental health concerns, and the list goes on and on of what our students are dealing with. I'm reminded of a student who said to me, Ms. Koch, it's rather presumptuous of you to believe that I am loved and that I have a support system. That took me back. I was like, oh, I felt so sad and helpless, but it reminded me of a valuable lesson. It is up to us to be their support system. It is up for us to remind them that it is okay to make mistakes, and it is okay to ask for help. Finally, Columbus State made our approach more holistic and eliminated academic probation and exclusion altogether, gone. We now have what we call university support, or USS. Unlike probation and exclusion, it calls for a focus on the whole student. We ask them, what do you need? What's your emotional state? What's going on outside of the classroom? We work to create an action plan tailor-made for each student, which focuses on intrusive advising, accessible resources, peer coaching, and we meet with them one-on-one -on -one twice a semester to keep them on track. And let me tell you, it's working. Already, we're seeing that students participate in USS. 72 students after one semester return to good standing. This is in comparison to 52 on probation and exclusion. Thank you. At the end of the day, a university retention rate is based on a sense of belonging and policies that respect our students. If a student doesn't feel they belong or are respected, why would they return to our schools? I can speak to that personally. Not feeling respected changes everything for the worse. Being asked even one thing by my advisor way back then would have changed everything. That's why, and as an advisor myself, I make it a point to remember that there are things happening for my students outside my office. Life is always happening. Personally, I believe when we accept a student, we have an obligation to help them succeed in every way possible. That means using language to make them feel like they belong, are wanted, and supported. Studies have shown that if a student has a relationship with at least one person, they are more likely to persist. I challenge you to be that one person when you go back to your school. 
I'll leave you with this. If we can do this, we will create students who are more successful, that do not give up, and that know that they have a support system made up of people who care about them and are with them every single step of the way. Thank you.